Ryan is a senior engineer in the Aladdin product group at BlackRock. BlackRock is the world's largest investment management company, and Aladdin is BlackRock's end-to-end investment and risk management technology that they use internally to run investment businesses and deliver externally to other financial institutions. In Ryan's role, he focuses on the platform underpinning Aladdin with specialization in distributed systems, containers, microservices, cloud technologies, automation, and software development. Ryan's leading a small set of software engineers who define and maintain a configuration strategy for clusters and applications using Helm and customize to support environment variations across 100 plus production environments. Um, They've created pipelines to automatically deploy standard components to vanilla Kubernetes clusters, such as namespaces, quotas, CRDs, security scanners, telemetry components, ingress controllers, and they manage a GitOps pipeline, Argo CD, which deploys to over hundreds of clusters. He's constructed CI pipelines to lint and validate Kubernetes resources using KubeVail, KubeLinter, OPA coming soon. And these pipelines ensure that their manifests are using best practices. Ryan graduated cum laude from Drexel University in 2015 with a BS in computer science and a minor in business administration. Mike is a senior principal engineer on the Aladdin project and the director of open source at BlackRock. Mike has led the BlackRock open source program office where he partners with other members of the tech ecosystem and representatives from the BlackRock legal and compliance team to deliver on those open source goals. The open source project maintains open source license compliance through governance and oversight. It guides and enables organizations to work upstream with open source communities and fosters an open source culture inside the organization. In addition to his other responsibilities, Mike leads the Service Orchestration Council that's part of the Enterprise Architecture Program. The SOC is focused on defining the guidance and the best practices for building, deploying, and managing containerized applications and services bound for Kubernetes. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, Appreciate the intro. Um, I don't have a tremendous amount to say uh, anymore. Hello, uh, ArgoCon. Very happy to be here. And um, as Sarah just went over who both Ryan and I are and what we focus on, we really want to jump right to our cloud native journey because that is far more exciting as a firm. Um, as Sarah noted, we work at BlackRock, we work within the Aladdin product group, and we work on a platform called Aladdin. And just to reiterate, Aladdin is a is delivered as a platform to our clients. It's a centralized source of data, helps them make better and in more informed uh, investment decisions, effective risk management, and we do it at very very high operational scale and efficiency. So. As we look to evolve that to the next iteration, how do we increase our scale? How do we go faster? How do we do better? How can we have higher velocity and more operational scale for our clients as a fiduciary and to deliver for them the business value that they need to make those better investment decisions every day? Um, so we, we just talked about Aladdin and where I wanna go now is like our journey. Every journey and story begins somewhere And I think all these pictures on this slide are gonna be very, very familiar. We wanted to uh, standardize and adopt on containers. We we knew that was a good idea. We knew it was an amazing innovation and we started leaning into it pretty hard around development environments, repeatable environments. How can we test locally and in controlled environments, just like we're testing in production. So we have fewer bugs, we have, higher efficiency, higher velocity, fewer dev cycles as we go through it. The these are the, the trail map is kind of uh, interesting because it has dragons on it, right? And as you start defining this trail map for yourself and where you pick up what you need, containers, CI, CD, things like Argo CD, and you start moving and matriculating through both the landscape and the trail map, we kind of knew that we had to define our own. We knew that Cloud Native Compute Foundation and Cloud Native Patterns, Practices and Conventions could help us but maps are only so helpful, right? There are a lot of options. So we knew that we needed to lean into things like open source and communities and other like-minded people in the industry and specifically the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, this, this Linux Foundation uh, collection of just great human beings that have helped us move from what got us here 
to how we're going to get there. Now, again, I said there's dragons. This isn't the Oregon Trail. It's a it's a it's a tough hill to to climb, but but we're climbing it. And this this arc kind of shows where we started. So back in 2014, 2015, containers are great. We love them. We want to lean into it a whole lot more. We started experimenting with things like Mesos and pre-version one of Kubernetes and even had both of those deployed in uh, production context slash lab context for us to get better, smarter, faster with them. We started uh, understanding more about it and needing to get more enterprise grade with it because we are a highly regulated company and we are audited regularly by um, those regulations, our clients, and, and so on. So we decided to land on OpenShift as our first uh, our next logical step as a as a partner in Red Hat who had a Kubernetes distribution, had support, and we could continue to learn more with partners. And we segued directly into a case study with the CNCF. How do we deploy Kubernetes leveraging OpenShift in 100 days for just-in-time uh, machine learning and data science environments for our quants and desk side traders and investors? That all went really, really well. We Found out quickly we needed oh eventing framework well how can we continue to be cloud native there's a cloud and cloud event spec like let's leverage that let's write some real software and open source it and find other people that are really excited about it too and that's how we got introduced to the the great folks at Intuit and got associated with Argo and many other great companies within the GitOps and um, cloud native industry as we started getting into the tail end of the the 2010s 2019 2020. GitOps was clearly the winner on how you deploy containerized applications that are found for orchestration on Kubernetes. And we knew that we had to build a platform on a platform that we really, really admired and loved and we had already leaned into pretty heavily, Kubernetes. And what came from that was the Aladdin Kubernetes platform. Ryan is now gonna go through what the Aladdin Kubernetes platform is, how we got there and some of the decisions we, we made along the way. And, and just how excited we are that so much of it is grounded in the Argo project as a whole, not just Argo CD, Argo events, and, and so on. Ryan, off to you. All right. Thanks, Mike, for explaining why Kubernetes was rapidly becoming important to us and how it was solving our business use cases. I'm going to cover where we started and how far we got before aggressively leaning into open source, GitOps, and some of the best practices defined by our community. Like Mike said, since BlackRock is a highly regulated financial firm, it was easier to build than go through the process of onboarding external products. We also had many unique use cases, which didn't always align with roadmaps. So BlackRock created homegrown proprietary software. We built release systems, messaging queues, tool chains, and even, in a, even an orchestration system. Some of you might get a quick laugh, but we call our orchestration system MI6 server and SAM where SAM can stand for two things, secret agent man or server agent manager, depending on who you ask. And then you have MI6 server managing the secret agent men or the double O's. Believe it or not, the orchestration system has many similarities with Kubernetes, though nowhere near as rich feature set or as robust. It currently is managing 14,000 ish applications, 18,000 ish hosts, and runs across 200 environments. But Back to Kubernetes. As we started the OpenShift journey, we still had to abide by our release policies. Again, we're highly regulated and regularly audited. Teams still had to get the proper approvals for releases. Additionally, our homegrown release system didn't understand Kubernetes. So this meant the ops team had to handle any privileged tasks like deploying to a production cluster. Our developers ended up creating shell scripts basically wrapping Helm commands to imperatively deploy their microservices. As I'm sure you all can guess, this process wasn't scaling, even with less than 10 production clusters. In comes AKP, the Aladdin Kubernetes platform, though sometimes it is called a Kubernetes platform because it actually started supporting more than just Aladdin and took on some of other BlackRock's products. To quote Phil Carlton, there are two hard things in computer science, cache and validation and naming things, and we're, struggle, we're still struggling to name things to this day. As we were building out the platform, we formed a laundry list of requirements. We needed a delivery system, a messaging system that worked in and outside of Kubernetes, telemetry top to bottom and everything in between. 
disaster recovery in a cloud native way that cut against how we do a GDPR for Aladdin currently. A highly available registry doesn't matter how many clusters we have if we can't pull an image. Policy management, everything from information security to BlackRock's policies that will be audited against. All these requirements we figured out on the bare metal side and we had solutions for them, but our bare metal solutions didn't always translate nicely to the cloud native side. To meet these requirements, we started to stand on the shoulders of giants and embrace open source. We realized that these problems weren't just our own. As we started, as we started adopting more open source, we were able to start adding, well, add-ons without any capital investment. And if you can look at the image here, we started with the first layer, the common API, Kubernetes. We have PKS or TKGI or, TK, or TKG from VMware, along with OpenShift to make up our on-prem. And then the classic set of cloud providers and their Kubernetes as a service. The next layer, the core platform. And it's there for a lot of reasons. One of the main ones, to abstract away Kubernetes and the differences between the different jurisdictions. VMware's solution versus AKS's solution, not always one-to-one. -one. It also allows developers to ship code and not containers. And then finally, the, the, the core platform has an extendable interface that developers can build upon. And then the highest row are segments. This makes up our business applications, some of which make up Aladdin, and others that just make up other BlackRock products. All of this was done declaratively and deployed using Argo CD. Being declarative, declarative allowed us to deploy the core platform and business seg segments in a versioned and continuously reconciled way. Desired state make it so. So this is where we got to in about a year and a half. 174 clusters, a little bit under 1,800 applications, and 100 Git repositories. And if I were to refresh that Grafana dashboard right now, I guarantee those numbers have changed. The clusters and applications deployed via Argo CD are all greenfield. This doesn't even touch our bare metal estate where I was talking about MI6 server and SAM. And then finally, what's still in the works? We still have a lot to do. Some of the other Argo product projects that we are looking to leverage our Argo CD autopilot to help onboard our bare metal estate and have an opinionated uh, onboarding process and help us get to a quicker, easier button. Application sets. I already showed you 1,800 Argo CD applications. And as we onboard the Aladdin estate, we're going to get to even more. We need that factory of Argo CD applications. Argo workflows. First, our pipelines when there's a high demand, as well as be vendor agnostic for our CI pipelines. And then finally, Argo Cloud Ops, bring on more clusters, unify how we're creating our clusters from AWS, AKS to TKGI. Shout out to the Argo project and community for all the great products and inclusivity. My first open source contribution was to Argo CD almost two years ago. Thanks for listening. Mike and I look forward to connecting and answering any of your questions.